Well, I'm Penelope Prompt, otherwise known as Inga Hillegas. <laughs> and I just want to say that, um, first of all, I want to thank Brokers Alliance and Joe and Jessica and David and all the rest of the crew and um, just let you all know that it's been an honor working with all of you over the years. Um, I started in the marketing department with Fidelity Life back in 2006 and Joe was one of the first principals that I met and he was one of the most um, uh, just you know, fabulous person to work with, uh, taught me a lot, always was very, you know, kind on someone, you know, to someone that was just learning the business. So I do appreciate that and I value this relationship um, tremendously. They've been a great um, partner for uh, Fidelity Life. So what I want to talk about today is product related. I'm going to stay behind the podium because I will probably fall down if I don't. But um, so um, Fidelity Life Association, and I need my clicker here, I guess. Um, is a company that's been around for quite a while. So I'm going to take you through a little bit about the company, a little bit about the products, and then um, just a little bit talk about non-med uh, and non-medical life insurance and where it fits uh, in the marketplace and where we fit in the marketplace. Um, so Fidelity Life, is, like I said, has been around for a long time. It, um, it's actually been since 19, or 1896 is when Fidelity Life started. It was um, called the Mystic Workers, and it was one of the first life insurance carriers to provide life insurance for, the, uh, for middle America, for, the, for workers. And um, so, uh, you know, that being said, you know, that is kind of our niche, serving middle America. And um, what Fidelity Life has done is uh, revisited that origin of serving middle America by um, finding ways to provide exceptional, um, you know, value in life insurance itself for middle America and package that together with the ease of process and the efficiencies and the innovation in our technology that we've brought to the table as well to bundle it all up and make it a nice package so that this market can be served. Um, so with that, uh, you know, you can see that, you know, we really do pride ourselves on providing that guidance and the relationships that we do have uh, and growing those. So first of all, why non-medical life insurance? And Joe said it today, and if I had a dime for every time I heard the grossly underserved middle market, I probably wouldn't have to work anymore because I've heard it a lot, as I'm sure you all have as well. Um, it is out there. The Limer studies are out there. I'm sure you've seen these studies. Uh, I'm not going to read them to you, but um, also Joe mentioned that Fidelity Life did some focus groups, uh, and that is what we found, that it, there is a, it is really an underserved market, um, but there is a need. People want insurance, but people, uh, agents are not talking to um, to those people. So how do we get to those people? Uh, and that's one of the things that we also want to help with uh, in regard to bringing this all into a package that you can uh, serve this middle market. Uh, profitability is also uh, a key issue, especially with uh, smaller face amount, you know, middle market uh, insurance. Most people are looking for $100,000, $200,000 in life insurance. These aren't going to be your big fishes, in, you know, out of your, um, you know, the cases that you write. Um, but it is very profitable if you do it in, um, with fidelity and with a non-medical process. Uh, this is just an apples to apples comparison here. Again, I'm not going to read it to you. It's in the um, uh, presentation that I'm going to leave as a leave behind. But if you take, you know, what I call cheap term, which are those lower face amount term policies um, that people are looking for, and you place them um, with traditional fully underwritten, you know, paramed, uh, Ace, uh, case management, uh, follow-up, APSs, um, and you know you look at that, and this is just an apples to apples comparison in regard to premium. Um, traditionally, the economics uh, lend it to be not as profitable because you're, you know, you're first of all um, going to have lower placement rates. People drop out of the process. Um, you're going to have to, you know, wait six, ten, twelve weeks to get that policy placed. Um, a lot of carriers have non-commissionable policy fees, and then you've got your overhead. Uh, time is money, or if you're paying someone to follow up with case management, um, you know, you're, it's not as profitable as if you take that same amount of life insurance or the same, you know, comparison and place those cheap term, lower face amount term policies um, with a non-med product like Fidelity Life's rapid decision term. You're going to have a higher placement rate. Um, because it is a 24 to 48 hour process. We do pride ourselves on that. We truly do underwrite and approve cases in 24 to 48 hours. 
So uh, there is no case management needed because there is no paramed to follow up on, there is no APS to follow up on. It truly is a very efficient process. So as you can see, apples to apples, you're gonna increase your paid premium by quite a bit. And then also, um, Fidelity Life is competitive. Uh, a lot of agents, I think, are under the assumption that, you know, if you go with simplified issue or some non-med carriers, your client is going to have to pay two, three times as much for the same amount of coverage. Um, I did a comparison, and here again, I'm not going to go through, you know, this bullet or, you know, um, you know, premium by premium, but I took a term quoter, just an I-pipeline quoter, and I put in $100,000 uh, standard risk, you know, standard rate class. Um, looking at male and female, age, you know, 35, 45, 55, and you can see across the board when you take the average, now this is not the, you know, the lowest premium in a standard uh, when you run that term quarter, it's certainly not the highest, but I just took the average just to give you a comparison where fidelity falls. And as you can see, in a lot of cells, um, you know, it's, it's a matter of a dollar, dollar and a half more, this is a monthly premium, uh, and in some cases, it's even less. Um, so it is competitive. And then I also like to point out um, our return of premium is very, very competitive. Um, the, I'll go into a little bit more about the return of premium, but this is another um, you know, comparison on the bottom chart there where I did the same thing, put it in a term quarter. And just to note, you can see Fidelity really rises to the top in all these um, scenarios. And all those other uh, carriers that are listed there, that would be the fully underwritten route. So on a non-med basis, you can offer someone um, you know, $100,000, $250,000 in term insurance, add the return of premium rider, and it's going to be less cost than what it, they would have to go through on a fully underwritten term policy. So definitely competitive. And then now um, to get into the products, uh, we have a suite of products called Rapid Decision, uh, and the reason they're called Rapid Decision is because the decision is very quick. It is 24 to 48 hours. Rapid Decision Term is our flagship product. We launched this in, um, or started selling this product in 2006, um, and uh, it has grown um, exponentially over the years. Our growth is, has continued to grow even in, in the economic times that we've had. Um, our premium, paid premium year, year to year has grown significantly, um, and Rapid Decision Term has been a big part of that. It's a fully underwritten, guaranteed level term product with a max issue limit of 300,000 to age 45. You can see the other issue limits there, up to 200,000 to age 55, up to uh, 100,000 to age 65, and then even seniors can get up to 25,000 on this truly non-med um, product. Uh, it is guaranteed level term, and it is underwritten, like I said, in 24 to 48 hours. Uh, in lieu of a paramed or any kind of medical records or saliva or anything like that, what we do is we look at third-party data. We look at the MIB, we're pulling a pharmacy database uh, report on every individual as well as uh, a motor vehicle report. So those three pieces of third-party data along with our, you know, um, our risk assessment from the, from the underwriters and our rate class criteria, and that's the other booklet that I'm handing out, kind of gives you a snapshot of all the products and as well as the, um, the underwriting criteria, um, allows our underwriters to process and approve these that quickly. Uh, it does have some bells and whistles. It has some optional riders, uh, accidental death benefit, dependent child rider, a waiver of premium, and then my favorite, the return of premium. Uh, and then it has an included rider, the accelerated death benefit uh, in the event of terminal diagnosis. The individual can take up to 50% of their death benefit and use that for final cost, medical expenses, etc. So that's rapid decision term. Uh, in the same suite of rapid decision products, we have a, a universal life. This is a flexible premium universal life, so it's not like a guaranteed 100. Um, it's got some great competitive cash values. You can see there our current uh, 4.25 interest in years one uh, drops down 1% in years three through or two through 15 and then goes back up. Um, this is designed as more of an accumulation type product. It's got the same issue limits up to 300,000 to age 45, et cetera, as the rapid decision term. Uh, it's got some um, riders as well the um, accidental death benefit, the waiver of premium is a, a, a chosen waiver of premium, it's, it's flexible as well, uh, and the um, ADB waiver of premium and dependent child rider are on there. Uh, so like I said, it's just kind of a, a mirror of the rapid decision term just on a universal life chassis. 
um, underwritten again, non-med, no paramed's, no APS's in 24 to 48 hours. Um, so with this product, um, the, the guaranteed interest rate, 2.5, is at a minimum premium, is gonna provide a 20-year no-lapse guarantee. Um, Target obviously will take that policy out much, you know, much further, uh, and here again, it is a flexible premium. And then the third product in the rapid decision um, uh, portfolio is a mortgage product. This isn't uh, mortgage protection in the true sense that it, it's a decreasing term. This is just a level term um, you know, policy that's available. Um, we're able to go up to 500,000 on a truly non-med basis with this product up to age 45. Uh, the qualifier for that would be uh, either a first mortgage or the refinance of a mortgage within the past 13 months. So with that qualifier, we were able to go up to 500,000. Here again, non-med, no, no blood, no urine. Uh, and we also have a 40-year level term available. So that's pretty neat. Someone that comes across, so I think the mortgage market is turning around. We've seen some growth recently with the mortgage um, term product. Uh, but someone in their 20s and 30s are purchasing their first home. They can get up to $500,000 in just level term protection and hang on to that you know, for up to 40 years. And then if you tack on the return of premium, uh, the return of premium on the mortgage product is even more cost effective on a 30 year term. It's only 25% additional to add the return of premium. So for a you know, $1,000 premium for an extra 250, you know, for the next 30 years, they're gonna have life insurance protection for their family uh, and then the individual does not, you know, um, the benefit's not paid out, which is obviously for them the best case scenario, uh, but they get all their money back, so it's a win-win situation. Um, the mortgage product does have the same riders as a rapid decision term, um, and in addition to that, it has a couple additional riders, a disability income rider, uh, which would provide an income benefit up to $2,000 to the insured if they are disabled, and the nature of the disability was due to an accident, and we'll pay that up to 24 months and it also has an involuntary waiver of premium, or I'm sorry, an invo involuntary unemployment waiver of premium available as well. So here again, if they lose their job, they get laid off, um, they can hang on to their mortgage protection and not worry about that because we'll waive the premiums for up to 15 months. Uh, it also has an other insured, uh, so a husband and wife or spouse partners on a mortgage can be on the same uh, policy. So that's the rapid decision um, portfolio as far as the products and the issue limits and the features. And how, just to get a little bit more into the rapid decision and how we underwrite and just to kind of give you an idea, when you think non-med, a lot of people think simplified issue and they think table loaded, uh, you know, like a standard table four. Our rate classes are uh, true, uh, standard. There's a select rate class, excuse me, select rate class, which is a preferred rate. So for those individuals who have little or no health conditions, they can actually get a preferred rate. So in a non-med world, traditionally, any, you know, regardless of their health, someone's gonna get a standard table four um, rate class. So what we've tried to do with the rapid decision portfolio is take the convenience of a non-med product and where simplified issues maybe you know, on this end of the spectrum and the cheap term fully underwritten um, policies are on this end of the spectrum, we're trying to close that gap and make it more competitive. And here again, that would fit the middle market, these lower face amount term policies where it's sometimes hard to make money and a lot of agents maybe shy away from those cases. So um, the, uh, I need the slide, no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so anyway, so it is individually underwritten, so everybody's gonna get the best rate class available uh, based on their health. The risk assessment uh, and the rate class criteria are in those little booklets that I handed out, kind of the toolkit, gives you um, all the, the criteria. Some baseline qualifiers, just to kind of a, a, a note that I always, when I train agents, I always talk about some of the, just the key things. U.S. citizenship, permanent resident green card status, that's just a, a, a qualifier for our rapid decision products, as well as valid driver's license. And a lot of agents say, well, why do we have to have a valid driver's license? It's just life insurance. It's a third of our risk assessment. We're pulling a motor vehicle report. Without a valid driver's license, we can't pull a motor vehicle report. So we need that, and if someone just chooses not to drive, unfortunately, they don't qualify for our rapid decision product. So kind of a key thing, um, don't, you know, no state IDs, no suspended licenses, et cetera. So one of the big, um, in new agents, when they send in applications and they get declines, that's one of the biggest ones that I see. So just kind of a mental note. Primary care physician over age 55, um, because here again, it's non-med, so someone who's you know, 56, 60, and they say, oh, I'm so healthy, I don't even go to the doctor, I haven't been in 10 years, 
they're not gonna qualify either. They have to have a primary care physician uh, to qualify for the rapid decision. And then other little ones, um, you know, unfortunately a lot of America is now on some kind of antidepressant or anxiety medication or uh, something of that nature. Uh, as long as there's no significant um, uh, issues going on as far as psychiatric treatment, if it's just your, you know, stressful life or, you know, maybe it's a life event, uh, that's going to be okay. And then another really big one is no prior declines. A lot of times agents, um, I've come across agents that because here again they think non-med, they think simplified issue or they almost lump it with guaranteed issue, they get a decline, they're like, oh, well, let's throw it at fidelity, it's non-med, it might go through. If we pull an MIB and we see that they um, have something that it, I mean, the MIB doesn't show declines, but if they answer the question um, that they've been declined by a fully underwritten carrier, it'll automatically disqualify them. And then if we see something on that MIB, that's a condition um, that goes up beyond our underwriting, you know, we would know that as well. So it is underwritten. It's not like people are not gonna, um, you know, have their records uh, checked for this kind of product. So that's something that you need to set forth as an expectation. So that's rapid decision and the processes and procedures. Um, uh, currently, we have, um, of course, at paper applications. They can be pulled, you know, state-specific off our website. We also have a rapid app system, and it's our own technology. Uh, I think we were probably one of the first carriers uh, that developed this, uh, along with our innovation. That's our tagline. Innovation is our policy. Um, our IT developers came up with the rapid app process. I actually used it back in 2006 when I was an agent for a short time. Um, where you could sell over the phone. It's an um, online technology that takes uh, the agent and the client through the application, uh, goes through, and, and first of all, it also gets you a clean application because there's fields that have to be filled in, and if you don't have the fields filled in, you're not, you, you can't get to the, um, to the electronic signature portion of the online app. So it kind of forces someone to have a clean app, hence the you know, there's no need then for case management because no one's scrubbing the apps because you can't get to the app if you don't do it in that manner. So the rapid app system is a really great system. Um, all of the products that I'm talking about are available other than the, the UL just because there's an illustration involved. Um, but you can run all of them through the rapid app system, um, which like I said, is a really great slick system. We have webinars on it and et cetera. So, um, but the, um, Oh, and then the rapid app system, what it does, so it takes it through, and then it bundles all the information uh, into secured links that are locked, they're passcode protected, they're sent to the client, so an agent can literally sell over the phone, they don't have to drive across town for that $100,000 term life insurance policy for their client, they can call them on the phone, gather the information, like I said, it bundles it into a secured link, uh, sends it to them, they, um, you know, click on their email, open up the link, put in their passcode, they review it and literally click with a mouse, I agree, I agree. They type in their name and it goes right to Fidelity. So here again, very efficient because the agent does not need to do anything other than thank you very much, I'll call you when your policy's you know, ready for delivery. Or you can even email the policy because once it's issued, it's in the pending business detail uh, and it can be sent to your client within that day or two. So from the time that it's been um, uh, submitted. So, um, this is just a snapshot from that toolkit. I'm not gonna go into the underwriting criteria. You guys are probably all <laughs> not off if I did. So, But the point here is that it is individually underwritten to rate classes. So here again, there's a select, there's a standard, and then there's substandard rate classes available through four tables. So most of the conditions uh, are gonna you know, be within one of these uh, realms. And here again, I think over last year, um, about 65% of the policies that we issued um, were at that select rate class. So just to kind of give you an indication that it does come through and we do issue at that preferred rate quite often. Uh, and then obviously for people that do have more significant health issues, um, you know, we can offer them coverage as well. And so now to kind of switch gears a little bit, we have the rapid decision portfolio and then also kind of following along with how Fidelity is kind of a niche um, carrier, uh, we, we ser serve the middle market. Uh, this is, um, our graded death benefit is a, came to us as a brokerage product. Um, the GDB is a fantastic option for agents to have in their pocket and brokers obviously also have it, hence why it was, you know, originally a brokerage product. Um, it is a, um, 
an outlet for declines. I mean, what do you generally do with your declines now? If you get a you know, client, they've been outright declined, you, you've got to probably have limited options. You can offer them maybe a, a guaranteed issue, maybe a minimum of 25000 or 50000 uh, It's probably going to be a really expensive whole life. Uh, our graded death benefit is about as close as you can get to a guaranteed issue, but it is underwritten and there is criteria, uh, but it's an accept, reject. Uh, so there's like, um, there's about 12, 13 questions that are knockouts for the graded death benefit. And um, I don't know if they're on the next slide or not, but basically I've, you know, repeated them so many times. It's any history of AIDS, HIV, Alzheimer's, mental retardation or downs or requiring living assistance. So your client would have to be able to answer no to those. And then there's a second set of two year history. So a two year look back that the client would have to be able to answer no to no history of cancer, heart attack, stroke, chemo, radiation, diagnosis of cancer, um, drug use, criminal activity, more than one DUI. So outside of that, they would qualify for the graded death benefit, um, which as you can imagine, if you came across someone who got declined because maybe they had a heart attack three years ago, where are you gonna place that coverage? You're probably not gonna be able to place that coverage unless you go to like a guaranteed you know, issue type product. But with the graded, you can. And then the other um, unique thing, or what I like about the graded is there's a lot of opportunity for flexibility because there's term and whole life available, and it goes all the way up to $250,000 in face amount available. So the whole life is very simple to understand. It's level premiums and level face amount to age 120. Very simple. Uh, you can see the issue limits there. But the term is where the flexibility comes into play because there's a 10, 20, and 30 year term available and how that works is that it's level premiums for the term and level face amount for the term. So whether that's 10, 20, or 30 years, but it's guaranteed renewable with no further proof of insurability in the first anniversary year after the initial term. So in the 11th, the 21st, or the 31st year, guaranteed renewable, no increase in premium, and a one-time decrease in the face amount based on the original issue age, which you can see is kind of listed there. Uh, and then it's renewable to age 80 or for a certain amount of years. So here again, depending on your client's you know, um, issue, whether it's lifestyle or if it's health related, uh, this really gives, it, gives you some flexibility with the higher face amount, the different opportunities of the, um, you know, the term lengths uh, where you can really provide uh, them some coverage that fits them uh, the best if they do fall in that impaired risk or, or uninsurable uh, category. It's graded in years one and two, and that's a dollar amount per thousand. So generally it's premium plus 40, 50%, uh, and then year two it doubles, and then year three on it's 100% of the death benefit. So that's the graded, and here again, important to remember, it's not guaranteed issue, there are knockout questions. We do pull an MIB and the pharmacy and a motor vehicle report on there, but if, if you look at the rate class criteria and the questions on the application, it truly is just a accept, reject, we're only doing that because we're just, um, you know, making sure that there's nothing on there that would lead us to believe that, you know, they're not answering the questions, uh, you know, forthright. And then the last product I want to mention is our accidental death benefit. Our standalone accidental death benefit, we sold more of this last year than we um, had projected. We um, certainly surpassed those um, projections by far on this product. This is a guaranteed issue. There's no medical underwriting. The only requirement is US citizenship or permanent resident green card status. It's very simple. Ages 20 to 65, issue limits 50,000 to 500,000. That's it. So someone who's 21 years old or someone who's 62 years old is gonna pay about $30 a month for $300,000 in accidental death benefit coverage. This is a great, um, ancillary sale to a health sale. Um, a lot of our health, we've got some uh, relationships with some health centers that um, tack this on to every, you know, or offer it to every client on the back end of a health sale. Uh, it's very easy to write with the online application process. Um, it's got some features in regard to uh, a family rider and an auto safety and travel accident benefit automatically included, um, where you know, the auto safety, it's 10% additional if the individual dies in an auto accident and they're wearing a seatbelt. And it's 100% additional if they die in um, an accident on a common carrier. So, you know, plane crash, train wreck. <laughs> um, and then it also has a optional return of premium rider, which is kind of cool. It's a 15, 20, 25, or 30 year term, depending on the issue age. But here again, it becomes, you know, a win-win situation because if they don't, you know, if they go out th through those years, they have life insurance protection, but we're gonna give them their money back on the return of premium. 
So that's the um, accidental death benefit. And now what I would like to do is just kind of recap uh, some of the tips. This is more for uh, training purposes, what I usually go through. We have a lot of resources, kind of, we take the products and you know we, we take our systems and we take our support uh, and we try and wrap them in a nice package and put a pretty bow on them to deliver them to the agents knowing that, you know, like I said, this is not your, you know, uh, higher face amount, big fish, if you will. This is something that can be done profitably and efficiently. So just little tips, you know, asking the application questions, the accurate phone numbers, et cetera. This is, like I said, more of a, a training, but a little field underwriting on the front end certainly can save you a lot of money and time on the back end. So that's uh, little tips on how to get, you know, more premium placed. And then I wanna finish off with just a little bit of some sales ideas. Because we do have the different products and the different um, things available, like in the rapid decision term, uh, this is just one sales approach that I like to talk about to agents. Um, with our rapid decision portfolio, you can certainly offer someone, you know, in the middle market, someone maybe who's just looking for, her, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars to protect their family for income replacement in the event that, you know, something happens to them. You can certainly go with option A, which would just be a straight 20-year term, 200000 uh, It's going to be $28 a month, pretty cost-effective, pretty easy. It's going to be non-med. You could go a step further and offer someone, you know, that same product, a little bit more premium, and add the return of premium rider. So that, you know, after 20 years, they don't die, their family's been protected, but, you know, they get a check for just under $13,000, which is pretty neat. Um, I think that a lot of people in um, you know, middle America, they're probably not doing a, a lot of you know, financial planning or setting money aside. This is kind of a forced savings and it really it provides a, a value you know, for your client. Um, and then before I get too far into that, option C, you can certainly with a rapid decision UL, you can offer the Cadillac, a little bit more permanent protection if they wanna put some money aside, a cash accumulation product, you could offer the rapid decision UL all available on the same 24 to 48 hours. You know, Mr. Client, you don't have to go through a pyramid. No one's gonna come out to the house, poke you with a needle, et cetera, make you squeal like a pig. <laughs> um, and uh, so, but <laughs> when you offer this, I mean, everybody as a consumer, I know I do, like to have options, right? I don't want a ton. Don't give me 100 options. I don't wanna know, you know, that many options. But with this, you can give them a, you know, kind of a, a, a bronze, silver, gold option, if you will. And what do most people do when you give them a really cheap option, you give them a really expensive option, and you give them a middle of the road? They're gonna pick the middle of the road, right? So not only have you increased your premium and your commission because you've got a little bit higher premium on the policy, you're also providing them a service because, like I said, after 20 years, they're gonna get a check back for all their money. What other insurance that they purchase are they gonna get their money back on? Their auto insurance? No. Nope. Their home insurance? No. But for their life insurance, they can get all their money back. So. Um, to take it one step further um, with the portfolio, what you could also do is mix it up. A offer the $200,000 rapid decision term, but tell you know, the client, you say, you know what, you're young, you're healthy now, you can go through this process, we'll put you in the $200,000 20 year, after 20 years, we're gonna give you back all that money, but why don't we also put on a $50,000 UL? Same process, can be done all at once, uh, and then past retirement, you're gonna have something that goes on a little bit more permanent coverage. So boom, you're done. You, you, you know, like I said, they don't have to then think about it. Well, gosh, what's, what happens if, you know, their health obviously would be much different. Certainly the rates are gonna be much different, but you can kind of provide this little, you know, planning um, in a very simple, uh, easy way by just combining some of these products together. So that is uh, pretty much all I have. Um, to say about that. <laughs> um, no, the middle market is really kind of where, like I said, where we fit, um, especially in the independent IMO world um, that I uh, manage that, that channel. Um, you know, if you kind of in recap, you've got a complete non-med portfolio, you've got the rapid decision term, you've got the UL, you've got the mortgage, you've got all the riders, the options, you've got the graded death benefit term in whole life, and you've got the accidental death benefit, all available for very quick efficient um, processing of these cases. Um, we've got the rapid decision underwriting, so it's quick. We've got the online technology, and we pay commissions weekly. So for cases under 300,000, think of fidelity, and think of fidelity, um, because I think that when you, you know, start to get used to that, or your agents do, uh, and you start to gravitate that toward that, you're, you're probably not gonna go back. So with that, I thank you so much, and are there any questions? Yes.